This is a video tutorial to show how to take a full color photograph and color separate it into CMYK, that is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks for silkscreen printmaking. I'm going to start with a photograph in Photoshop, open it up, you go to image mode, You'll notice that it is indeed an RGB color space. You want to change that to CMYK color. Click OK. In your channels panel, uh, likely next to layers, if you don't see that, you can go to window and open it up here in channels. You can click on the individual ink colors, what will be separated, to see how much of those colors are in each layer. If I turn on the cyan and magenta, you can see how those two ink colors mix. You can see the blues and purples and reds. If I turn on the yellow, turn off the cyan, you can see the oranges, yellows and reds. And if I have all three of the color inks, you basically see the, the image as it appears, uh, minus a bit of the shadow, which if you turn on the black, you can see that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off and take these these inks one at a time. So I'm going to, with the cyan channel selected, I'm going to select all, copy, and start a new document. So command N. With it copied to my clipboard, it will give me a document that is, is exactly that size. So I can create, paste, and now I'm going to half tone this cyan layer. So I go to image, mode, bitmap, Flatten. Okay. Now you want to make sure that your the resolution of your original image is high enough for print. I like to, to work at 300 pixels per inch at actual size. So this image is uh, about 8 by 16 inches. So at 300 pixels per inch, that's really important because your halftone dots are in relationship to uh, the entire number of pixels that you have in your image. So there are a number of options here. You can you can choose 50% threshold, pattern dither, diffusion dither, but we're going to just look at halftone screens. So keep that at that. Uh, I, I like to um, have input and output at the same resolution, so I'm going to have 300 and 300. And now the options are to uh, give a frequency that is essentially the number of marks per inch, and then you have an angle, and then you have a shape. So let's just let's choose ellipse. And a good rule of thumb is to take your eventual screen that you're going to put your uh, images onto, your silk screen, and divide the line count of your uh, screen by five, by four or five. So I'm going to be working on a, a 160 thread count screen. So if I divide that by five, I get 32. So I'm going to just make this 32. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, now I'm on the blue ink. So the angle that I want the, the blue ellipses to be oriented is 15 degrees. It's very important that these angles be different from one another for each ink uh, so that you don't create a strange moiré pattern. Again, you could choose whatever shape you want, but I'm going to uh, just choose ellipse. OK, and you can see if I zoom in that I have changed this image to just black and white. Right? There are no gray tones anymore, which is essentially what a bitmap is. So now I can grab all, and you can see the angle, the 15 degrees that I've placed on, on this image. I'm going to select all, copy, and I'm going to go back to my original image. And in this channel, I'm just going to hit paste. And what it's going to do is it's going to replace what was in that channel, that continuous tone image with the grayscale, to this now half-toned bitmap image. And now I can go to magenta. And you can see, if I zoom in, you can see that the magenta layer is not half-toned yet. Right? So you can see the continuous tone uh, the gradient chiaroscuro from white to solid magenta being overlaid with this cyan halftone 
an ellipse pattern at a 15 degree angle. I'm going to turn off cyan, select all, copy, make a new document, hit paste, and now go to bitmap again, OK, and hit OK. We're going to keep the frequency the same. You could you could vary this if you want, but it will look uh, funky, and you'll notice the, uh, the screen if you change the scale. So for the magenta layer, you want the angle to be 75 degrees. And you can see if you zoom in, that angle has changed, right? It's, it's a little bit more upright. I'm going to select all, copy, go back to my original image. I'm still in the magenta channel. I'm going to hit paste now. And now if I turn on the cyan and magenta, you can see these halftone dots are creating uh, a sense of this photograph already, right? And you see uh, the dots starting to form these sort of rosette rosettes that uh, you're used to seeing when you look closely at photographic images that have been printed in magazines or newspapers. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the yellow layer, make sure I'm on the yellow channel, select all, copy, new document, paste, go to mode, bitmap, flatten, yes, okay, I'm going to keep the ellipse, 24 frequency, but now the angle is going to be zero. We choose zero for uh, uh, the yellow layer because the yellow layer is the one that you see the least and that is the one that is perpendicular to the, the picture plane. And now if I turn these three on, you can see this image really starting to appear. Of course, as I zoom in, it becomes more and more abstract and less legible, but this is, of course, uh, very, very, this is at 450%. So at 100%, it will look more like this. Now I have I've enlarged the the half tone a little bit more than I than I would if I if I really wanted to to print this. I just thought I would do that so I so you could see the uh, the pattern and structure. Okay, so I'm going to now go to the black layer, the final layer. Select all, copy, new, paste, and on this layer we are going to make the angle 45 degrees. Hit OK, select all, copy. You can see even, even on this screen as I zoom in and out, how you can start to see some funky little grid things happening. Um, and that's because uh, the image is interacting with the resolution of the screen, which is also um, on a grid, of course. So you can kind of see how at certain points you see this, this kind of lightened grid appearing. That's not actually there. It's just uh, the way it's, it's trying to render. Okay, so again, select all, copy, go back to our original image in the black layer, hit paste, and now you can begin to see, and actually, the way you would print this with silkscreen is you want to print from light to dark. So we'll print the yellow first, then we'll add the magenta. So at some point, your, your image will look like this, which is quite nice. And then we'll add the, the cyan, which adds the blues and the greens and mixing with the yellows and uh, the browns, right? Mix, mixed um, and, the, and the neutral tans. And then the, finally, the black layer, the last layer to add the shadows. So then what you would do is you would just turn these off and send these layers individually to print to your laser printer, and you have your films for screen printing.